goals against, and a 9.29 save percentage. Eric Schneider, on the other hand, is 5-7-0 with a 4-10 goals against and an 8-8-7 save percentage. Last game versus the Niagara Falls Canucks, 19 seconds is all it took for the other team to score. Do you think that the Avalanche have a game plan to make sure that doesn't happen against a Final Panthers team that's actually trending upwards? Yeah, as you said, they have a few players that are actually on the up right now. 26 points between two of their players right now. Uh, the Avalanche just got to make sure that they're sound defensively. A little bit of pressure never hurt anybody, but you can't get it, let it get to your head. Always got to remember that up the middle pass is never a good idea, which is exactly what happened in the other game against the Canucks. An up the middle pass, and a few a few shots later, there it is, we're back in your net. So make sure if you're getting that pressure, you try to keep it along the, uh, the perimeter. And as long as the Avalanche do that, they should be in good for this game. Uh, let's start with possession. They start the breakout, and it's Nick Bro. Pass it up in his feet was Woodhouse. He ended up throwing it towards the corner with Nick Bro. Circling around the perimeter, Grinecki taps it up, and it's intercepted. Coming up, passing up to Jared Hill, and it's Chris Weber who just misses a shot attempt. Battling is the former Avalanche, Jared Hill in the corner. He's got three men on him, and they eventually get it off of him. Holding up the boards of the Avalanche. Nick Grove chips it in, and Woodhouse takes Jared Hill to the boards. Butterfield starts to get the puck, but Jared Hill instead grabs it, and he starts to break out for the Pelham Panthers. He pushes it up to Capuchin. Capuchin wins it around, and Woodhouse tries to clear it, but it's intercepted by Andrew Rennie, and the Avalanche are still in their own end. Puck thrown up by Raposo, just missing the stick of Andrew Rennie, and it's Trevor Meacham with some pressure, banks it off the boards. Derek Raposo across to McPhee, and Raposo has it back. Back to the stick of Ben Hadanaka, who dumps it down to Trevor Meacham's end. Derek Staden, the hottest avalanche right now, 18 points in his last 10 games. Pushes it up to Ben Hadanaku who crosses the line. Dances around Meacham. Takes a shot off the post. That was a close call for Ben Hadanaku who danced around Trevor Meacham. Really the only opportunity the Ass have had so far in this period. Their passes are not, are not crisp and therefore they've had a hard time getting in on pressure. Although the good thing is they've kept pulling to the outside. So you get still have to take a shot as that last one was going off the outside. And another one that's going wide as well. And some might not count that as a shot, it was just going well wide, but Duke is still well to cover the puck. And so far, not a very good start for either side. It's been basically back and forth, no real opportunities given. Yeah, both teams seem like they're just kind of feeling it out right now. The Abs have had a horrible time so far trying to make Chris pass to each other. And if they want to get some offense, they're going to see another pass that's well off the target it's almost impossible for Rutherford to make that play is that's a hard pass that's about stomach high most players aren't going to knock that down especially when they're going on the rush they got to keep those passes a little bit lower that way it can go stick to stick instead of having him to try out for baseball to swat it down out of the air Adam Mayer wins the faceoff Kaylee McPhee pass the puck up to Brady Rutherford Rutherford Gets around Peter Ezo, who's trying to defend it. Adam Mayer to Rutherford. Rutherford slaps it off the blocker and it bounced in front, but Adam Mayer got tied up by Tristan Burr, and the Panthers break back out. Just missing a deke attempt, it was Chris Weber. Peter Ezo, Tristan Burr takes a shot that was deflected, and the Avalanche have a potential two on one with McPhee jumping in the rush. He's got Rutherford, and he can't get the curl and drag on a nice defensive play by Ryan Ellis. Ryan Ellis goes around the boards after taking a hit. Going in hard on the portrait guard of the Avalanche and the Fallon Panthers managed to get it out. Simpson gets the return pass, passes it up and he just misses Justin Homer. That was a good rush for the Avalanche McPhee. Uh, the younger Kalen going up, the curl and drag unfortunately was pulled head off his stick. Kyle Kennery though did a good, do a very good job at keeping the puck in, so at least the Avs were able to maintain a little bit more pressure, but really no shots to show for it. And right now neither team has generated really any kind of attempt on net that would be worthy of praise. Both goaltenders have had a pretty easy four, uh, almost four minutes now to this game. 
Van Loon gets knocked over at the line by Francesco Gigliotti. He gets knocked down one more time by Francesco Gigliotti. What a hit twice on Van Loon. Van Loon now has the puck again after an indirect pass from Bernanke who jumps up in the rush. Puck chipped off the stick of Justin Homer. Deflected out by the Pelham Panthers. Simpson has it to Homer. Kennery. Pass across to Van Loon. Oh. isn't quite ready for it. Anthony Gigliotti levels Kennery up the play. He's getting a penalty. That puck was well that puck was well off the stick of Kennery and he just lowered the boom on him. It would have been a clean hit if he had taken it a, about a half second or second earlier. So the, the Ancats Rabbits are going to start with the power play tonight. And they'll have their power play specialist, Dirk Stadding, on the back end. He's one of their most prolific scorers this year. He's already got 41 points. 42 points, my, my apologies. And he's currently got, like you said, the 18 points in his last 10 games. So he's absolutely on fire right now. And six of those points being power play assists. So let's see if he can assist his way to a power play goal for the Avs. Had Naka takes a shot deflected off the skate of Chris Weber. Van Loon, where he likes to be on that side, on the sideboards at the point, but it's dumped out by Chris Weber. 154 left in the first period, and the Avalanche trying to set up with 132 in the power play. One thing that the Avalanche like to do is they like to, like you said, they, have, they like having four forwards. They really like having Van Loon on that point. They like having him and Dirk Stagg. They're both mobile guys, and they, they can create some space, and they really like those point shots. Matt Rundrock, one of the hottest Panthers, doing the Omens work on the penalty kill right now, killing off valuable time. Now it's 10 seconds, about 11 seconds killed off. And it's Ben Woodhouse who's in the Panther zone. Woodhouse at the circles, passes it down to Tanner Brunecki. Brunecki, great pass to Woodhouse, deflected off this, the pads of Meacham. Eric pass out in front. Alex regained the puck as Woodhouse has it on the circles again. Pass it down to Kaelin McPhee. McPhee to Woodhouse. A, a sky high pass, gloved down by Brunecki. McPhee trying to set for a shot, takes it. Fires off the pad of Schneider and he covers up. Schneider, an easy save as no traffic in front of him. 37 seconds left in the power play for the Avalanche. A lot of puck moving on that power play. They finally get some setup time when the second unit comes over the boards. And they have one point shot to show for it. And Schneider makes the easy save and then covers it up. So no rebound and no real dangerous opportunities for the Avs. Dirk Static on a pass from Van Loon. Static jumps up for a second. Bounce off Kennery who was in front trying to screen Schneider. And Static turns it over. Hadanaka has the puck. Had a knock up, pass across, off the post, Dirk Static hit the post. Oh, it was Liam Balloon, and it was Had a knock out in front, he took the shot, trying to take another shot, Dirk Static has it. Static, a weak one, and Schneider covers up, but Liam a Van Loon almost had a goal. I don't know how he didn't score, and that we're all thinking, he, oh, he's got a tap in. He's on the other side, wide open. Schneider's not even over there, and he nails the red post. Van Loon not too happy with himself after that kind of opportunity, but Ben had an ACA with an absolutely beautiful slap pass through the crease. You, it just doesn't get any easier than that, unfortunately, for number 21. He's not going to pot his next goal. And you think for the third best rookie in the league, you would have put that one away. Ben Hadanaka, another shot this time with deflected off Mike Butterfield. Power play now over, back to 505. Hadanaka has it, tries to pass it out in front. Does Kennery has one blocked by another Panther? Kennery gets bodied off by Adam Schultz. In the corner, Adam Mayer trying to pressure him. Chris Weber tips it up. Derek Raposo has it. Kennery can't get it as Butterfield deflects it off the boards. Thomas Young, captain of the Panthers, gets it out. Indirect pass. Woodhouse just manages to get that and onside as well. Macklin McPhee takes a weak shot, deflected away easily by Schneider. Woodhouse passes it down to the fence, chipped off of Schneider, can't find it, but it was cleared by Adam Scholes on a great heads up play. And suddenly the ads are all over the, the Panthers right now. That power play, that back end of it, really sparked them the momentum all on the Avs side right now. Kaelin McPhee twisting and turning away from number 91, Jared Hill. Avalanche breaking out. 
Oh, big hit. Gigliotti lays out Yanni Scropolis. Francesco Gigliotti has already had three big hits in this game. He dumps it down, and it's Matt Rubrock who's getting pressure along the boards. Avalanche got the puck, and another penalty coming to the Panthers. Oh, looks like a possibly hooking call against Gigliotti. And Gigliotti's hot under the collar there. He's taking a few extra smacks with his stick on uh, Kalen McPhee there as he was hooking up Scropolis to try to get away. And now uh, another power play coming up, but this time with all the momentum going for the ads, it's going to look a little more dangerous. As Schneider was not tested much on the first power play, even that last little bit, he only had maybe two shots. But ever since then, the ads have been all over Eric Schneider in goal. And he's played really well. He's had a few deflection saves to make. He's had a few uh, shots where, there, where there's no rebound whatsoever. So let's see if the, the high-powered offense of the ads can strike. The 11th best power play, 18% going with static. The corner back for the team, and he has it, throws it in front. It was deflected and cleared by the Panthers. Ryan Dugas lays it for Liam Van Loon. He's got Peter Izzo surveying. Pass across to Ben Hadanaka to Dirk Static. Static jumps up, has Van Loon at the point. Static then takes his place back and reverses it to Van Loon. Loads up for a shot. Great healing block by Andrew Rennie. Fake slap shot pass across to Dirk Static. Static lines up. Schneider through the crowd manages to get that right to his chest. And Schneider hasn't had too many difficult shots, and he's probably going to want to take all of these shots all night long from the Avalanche. They haven't been too difficult, but he's also been a very, very effective at moving his rebounds around. He hasn't had very many, and that one only came about a couple feet in front of him. And then it dropped and he was able to cover it. So if you can do that as a goalie, you're in, you're in great shape. Obviously, you'd love to have no rebounds, but you can't be 100% perfect on every shot. Avalanche have to face off win. Just over a minute left in the power play. Had knock out. Up the circle. Great deflection on the active stick from Ryan Ellis. Doesn't have a goal in the season, but he's showing you why he's such a great defensive penalty killer. Ladies and gentlemen, please play 50-50 tonight and win a truckload of cash. About the fourth time we've seen Hadanaka or Woodhouse from that circle lined up, pull it back and try and take a shot. And I think Pelham's telegraphing it beautifully. They've been able to get in front of a lot of block shots. These last two power plays have about four blocks each on them. So Pelham doing a very good job defensively. I don't think he's trying to spring Ruber off, but it's deflected. And Hadanaka chips it up for Liam Van Loon, who dances around Scholes. Van Loon just missed a high shot. He looked like he was buzzing for a goal, but he misfired the puck. Avalanche regrouping. 35 seconds left in the power play, 120 in the period. Hadanaka just misses a hit, and it's thrown along the boards. Crouches in the corner. He wins the puck battle. Raposo has it to Tanner Vernecki. Vernecki gets around Thomas Young. Vernecki to Woodhouse. 10 seconds left in the power play. One last opportunity. Croucher had a lead pass fed to him, but it was the great stick play of Mike Butterfield that stopped him. Penalty now over as it's once again five on five. Bridgewater at the side of the net trying to pull a Van Rienstijk, and he can't sneak it through as Brunecki keeps the puck in. Izzo with a great pressure play, and the puck's out of the zone. Puck turned over, Matt Rugrock. Can't get it as Izzo's offside. That was really close as Izzo just got onside. And uh, the play blown down. But the Avs have done a really good job of moving the puck around on the power play the second time. Although this power play a lot better than the first. They spent most of it in the Pelham zone. And if they can keep that kind of pressure up, they will look good. Um, they obviously would like to be potting in those power play opportunities. You never want to squander a power play. It's a great chance to go ahead in the game. And right now the Avs are slowly building up more momentum as their puck movement has been great. They've been taking shots, making it hard on Schneider and on the defense. But the defense, to tell them, although their record isn't great, their defense have played very well tonight. Kirk Bellani has along the boards. Being pressured by Kenry. Puck ends up in the corner after it's chipped away by 
Schneider, Bro can't get a slot feed, and it's McPhee who takes a shot, bounce off a player. Simpson misses a shot wide. Bellani reaches and misses. Out in front, here he comes, and it's in the feet of Kennery as it was Homer who had the perfect opportunity but passes it to Kennery in his feet. That was a beautiful play by Homer, and nice keeping, and Homer passes it, it just goes into the feet of Kyle Kennery, who's been hot as of late with 10 points in his last 10 games. Homer has it at the point, passes it across, and picked up by Kalen McPhee. McPhee circles with Jordan Simpson on the other side, deflects it down by Homer. Kennery, pass it down to Simpson. Simpson to McPhee, he runs it along the boards. Kennery has to dodge an official to get the puck in Volani. A great keep in by Simpson, and it's Kennery who has it again. Avalanche are turning the puck over, throws offside after that last little move from Kyle Kennery. Puck dumped on by the Avalanche, they go for a change. Macklin McPhee pressuring as he goes for a hit, and it's Hadanaka battling against Copperton. He wins the puck battle, still trying to get after it, but the Avalanche have it in the center ice, and it's puck chipped in by McPhee. Macklin McPhee goes low to deflect the hit away from Connor Brown. Scrapless defending, has to run it to his man, and it's one on one the other way. Yanni Scrapless getting pressured, flips it past Connor Brown, and it's put, chipped up by Ryan Ellis. Rutherford on Ellis, Ellis reverses to Rubrock. Rubrock has seven goals in the past ten game in the past nine games for the Panthers, so he's a guy that the Albans are going to want to look after. Yeah, and Scrapless did a very good job of erasing him from the play. He had a pass coming up on the left side boards over here. And Scrapless decides, you know what, I'm going to step up on you even though you're a much larger guy than I am. Rugrock, great stick play. Nice behind the back move from Ben Woodhouse. Eight minutes in the first period. Tanner Renecki passed up to Ben Woodhouse. He gets rubbed off officially by Jared Hill. And he throws it off the boards, but it hits Ellis, who picks it up. Ryan Ellis gets a no, it does not deflect off of Chris Weber, and that'll be an icing based off coming into the Panther zone. One thing the Avalanche have done an amazing job at tonight is not giving up on loose pucks. About five times, over on that left side near the Pelham bench, Pelham has had a chance to get the puck out, and some hard-working Avs have been able to keep the puck in and create more offense. And that's why you've seen a lot more time on attack for the Avs in this first period so far, because of those really good turnovers for the Avs, really bad ones if you're a Pelham Panther. And those turnovers are something we're going to want to keep going through this entire game. They've been hound dogging that puck almost like, almost like a junkyard dog on some fresh raw meat. That game. They are just turning that puck over. First off, coming into the Panthers zone as it was deflected into the bench. Schneider waiting for the puck drop to his right as Woodhouse is going to face off against Young. Puck won by the Panthers as it was pushed forward. Chipped up by Gigliotti who gets rubbed out by the defender of the Avalanche. Grinecki chips it off off the boards and it's Nick Grove. Poe has it, and he runs into Mike Butterfield, who runs back into him. Raposo sets up for a tip, but it was deflected by Rugrock, and he tipped it to himself, and he's got some speed against Raposo. Puts his shoulder down, tries to wrap it into the net, but it was well in front of Ryan Dugas. Nick Rowe on a drop pass from Woodhouse. Can't get a puck as... Francesco Gigliotti's been everywhere and he gets that puck away. Raposo takes a shot that went wide. Nick Rowe loses the puck after Anthony Gigliotti swipes at it. Simpson passes it across. And jumping up in the place, Colin Mc, uh, Kalen McPhee. McPhee gets wrapped around Butterfield who turns it over. Great hit from Kyle Kennery on Chad Maurice. Simpson throws it over. Jordan Simpson circles behind Dugas Van Lane, chips it, almost turns the puck over, ends up on the stick of the Panthers, and Dugas has to calm it down for the Avalanche. 
Six minutes left in this first period. Avalanche and Panthers still looking for the first goal of the night. Almost turned over. Simpson does turn over to Chad Maurice, but McPhee bails him out, and he gets hit along the boards. You can tell the game's really picked up in physicality. A lot of hits are being thrown right now on both sides, not just for Pelham. Great stretch pass, Van Loon can't handle it, so it goes to the corner. And oh! Trevor Meacham with a reverse hit. The classic reverse hit from Van Loon. What a bend. Meacham looks like he's a little winded after that one. And another penalty. This one coming to the Avalanche, though. And there might be coincidentals coming here. Justin Homer with an ill-advised hit. The puck wasn't quite as near the player. It looked like it was... Looked like he threw an extra cross check. But there, I would be surprised if there's not at least coincidental, but the ads might pick up an extra penalty here. Justin Homer with a little bit of undisciplined play. Almost looked like a scrap was about to start as one of the Panthers players lost his score, but that was most likely from the tackle that pulled a lane on him. Go wait and see. I, I imagine we'll either have some... Some five on five action. We might have a five on four power play coming up. Callum Burley has two players in the box. I would be shocked if the Avs come out with a power play on this, but it, the way it's looking, the Avs have five on the ice. Callum only has four. So it looks like the Avalanche might indeed. They might indeed be getting a power play here. Still only four Poland Panthers on the ice, and it, it, it all started from that play in the corner. There was the Van Loon hit as he went on Trevor Meacham. That was a nice reverse hit, and then Homer went into the corner. Couldn't quite see exactly who, um, with Chad Maurice, and I guess he didn't like the extra little shots, and then you could see Homer threw a little bit of a bear hug on him. And a couple cross checks later, we have three players in the box, one for the Avs. And yet, Pelham is getting the extra penalty here. Trevor Meacham getting it. I imagine for roughing. Thomas Young is asking the referee, the referee what exactly the extra was for. We'll know, it's, we'll know in a second once it's announced. We can only assume it'll be an extra roughing call. I don't imagine Mark Barrick, the head coach for the Pelham oh, Panthers, will like the explanation that Young's about to do, uh, deliver to him. And it looks like Homer is getting a 10. So he's uh, going to be going to the dressing room, and so is Micho. So Homer and Micho are both going to head to the head of the dressing room to cool off. Okay, Far, we're still waiting as Bear is getting an explanation from the referee. Well, the only advantage here for uh, for both coaches, uh, maybe for Ken more more likely, you had a lot of time to draw up a nice power play plan. Although you are going to start off outside of the zone, more than enough time to drop a half decent plan. Face off, waiting to be taken as Hyde knock a face off against Young. Young wins it, and it's. Put up by the Panthers. Dirk Static. So it's dangerous when it's on the end of his stick as he passed it up to Liam Van Loon. Van Loon across Krista Hadanaka indirectly and he chips it to himself. He reverses on Butterfield who's trying to knock him off balance. Adam Mayer getting some power play time as Hadanaka has it. At the circle. Mayer tries to put off front. Oh, and a save from Schneider's at the post, and Schneider covers up as looks like Henry's getting bear hugged by one of the Panthers. Eric Schneider goes left to right, and that right pad stretches out to Rob Kennery, who was on the backhand, only a couple feet from the goal line. And you know he's not feeling rusty after that. That stoppage of play is sometimes players will their legs will seize up a little bit they're not going to be as loose after what felt like about four to five minutes worth of stoppage but Eric Schneider on the ball tonight and he's really kept his team in the game and Dugan's at the other end has not had much to do both because of the power plays they've been taking and the Avalanche are looking to keep this going as it's chipped away by Matt Rugrock great defensive play he's got a player with him 
Kapuchin tries to break through, and it was smartly deflected away by Jared Static. Jared Static just made a phenomenal play. He stole, he stole it right off of the Pelham Panthers stick, and now they, they're back on offense on the power play. Jared Static shot out in front, deflected away. Great sti- uh, skate play from Andrew Rennie, and that Mizrock goes off some more time. Less than a minute in the power play for the Avalanche. And the extra penalty was a roughing after the whistle call. 405 left in the first period. Still no score as the Avalanche have with Luke Crocher. He's got some speed. Pass it across Woodhouse. Misses it. And it's McPhee who passes it down to Woodhouse. He's got down to McPhee. Back down to Woodhouse. Ben Woodhouse. Looking to circle. Pass across to Raposo. Shot off the skate of the, the stick of Eric Schneider and deflected into the screening. Not only is Dirk Static an incredible offensive player, but you know he can play defense very well. Is on that last play, it was Andrew Rene who got a nice pass from Rubrock, and it looked like it was about to be a shorthanded breakaway. And instead of taking a penalty or taking him down, he lifts the stick and takes the puck right off. And there you go, the Avalanche are back on the tack. Uh, an absolutely phenomenal play from Dirk Static. Raposo shot off the glove hand of Schneider, who couldn't handle it. And Tanner Vanecki has it at the point. Penalty now over. Another successful kill from the Panthers. As it's had an act at the po- uh, passes down to the point. Oh, Croucher. Falls over as he gets knocked down by Young. A stretch pass coming up. Jared Hill races and he's he'll be the first in the corner to get the puck. Brunecki rubs him out in the corner and it's Woodhouse on Butterfield. He gets around Butterfield. Adam Schultz reverses to no one. Back out in front, chopping at his at his hands. Because Adam Schultz no penalty and Cruncher goes down hard against Weber. Schultz just made a, a great play on Woodhouse's. A nice pass in front to him as Croucher tried to find him, but he was denied of the great A scoring opportunity in the high slot. Tristan Burr turns the puck over. Young can't get there first as Brenecki bounces it off the wall. Woodhouse smiling with Young. Francesco Gigliotti gets around Simpson. Panthers take it to the front of the net. No shot coming. Great glove save from Dugas, and it's Deflecting into the bench of the Avalanche. Finally some pressure from Pelham. They haven't had this all night. Especially not in this first period. And I believe Brunecki actually got in front of that one. He blocked it and then unfortunately tried to clear it and put it into his own bench. As you said, Panthers were looking a little flat-footed up until this recent surge. And they're in the offensive zone trying to create more, but it's one back. Great face-off win by the Avalanche as they break out of their own end. Still waiting as Kyle Kennery gets a pass across. Kennery on the off wing in the Panthers zone. Tries to deke around Meacham, who's back on the ice. And it's deflected back in by Yanni Skropolis. Across line, John Lone took a shot that took a deflection and missed Eric Schneider's net by inches. Just under two left, another deflection, this time from Kennery. And it goes into the netting and the Alphines are pick up right where they left off. And you can tell why Kennery's been caught as of late. He's been all over the place. He's, he could have easily had two goals tonight. That chip was a nice chip in the, in the middle of the slot. Unfortunately, he throws it about five feet over the net. And then, of course, he had that chance on the last, on the last power play they had where Schneider robbed him only a couple inches from the goal line. So it's definitely going to bode well for Kennery's. Ken uh, is definitely going to like the game he's seeing so far. Dean Rubrock are some of the few players that uh, have scored seven goals in the past ten games, so a lot of hot goal scores in this game tonight as the Avalanche worth the cycle. Hadnaga fans on an initial pass, tries to find someone in front, but Butterfield chips it away. Chipped up by Jared Hill, who gets hit along the boards. Young can't get around Bro. As he pushes it back up. Chip back down by the Panthers. Just over a minute left in this first period. Dugas lets it go to 
Dirk Static. Last Dirk Static. Last Dirk Static. Puts it up, Copperchin throws it right back down. Dirk Static from the circles. Pass it across behind Nick Burrow, picks it up. Turned over, and it's Matt Rugla who gets it poked off his stick on a smart play from Derek Raposo. Noah cuts into the slot. High shot safe. Rugla can't get the rebound. 35 seconds left as the Panthers trying to set up some offense. Connor Brown and Rugla who circles the net. Matt Rugla loses it for a second but reverses to Brown. Brown lost it in his feet. Can't reverse, but Rugla picks it up. He exits the zone with 15 seconds left. Adam Schultz jump, dumps it down with 10 in the first period. One last opportunity on the rush for the Avalanches. Kyle Henry turns it over. Two seconds left. Caperton takes the one shot, but it, the buzzer went, and it's an easy save for Ryan Dugas. 0 0 the score after the first period. Some great physicality. Some pretty good offensive opportunities, mostly going for the Avalanche. Swim corners back for the second period. Well, hopefully, the deadlock will be broken. Welcome back to the Morgan Firestone Arena here in the second period. Where the Outlands are hosting the Pelham Panthers. 0 0 is currently the score. I'm Eric Hallett. Joining me is Hayden Hallett. And despite the fact that the Outlands had four power plays in that first period, they did not manage to strike on any of them. What's the formula the, formula the Outlands need in order to get past Eric Schneider? Well, right now, the one, upper, the one thing that I've noticed is the Avs really like to do that the long shot from below the circles. So that's a really long shot for them to take and Schneider has a better chance of seeing the puck and Pelham has done a really good job at blocking shots. They've had already a dozen blocked shots in that first period. So they've done a really good job of getting in the shooting lanes. So what they need to do is instead of going for the long shots, they need to try to get in close. Liam Van Lute almost had a tap in on the very first power play they had. They need to go kind of planes like that where they go cross crease and get in close on Eric Schneider. Speaking of blocked shots, someone, uh, uh, the, one of the defensemen for Pelham, Mike Butterfield, felt like I mentioned him at least a dozen times due to his great defensive play and his willingness to give up his body to block the shot. Well, the puck seems to be sticking to him like maple syrup, so. Puck right to the right of Ryan Dugas and Connor Brown. Sets up for the face-off, loses it, but it's Copperchin who takes it away. Copperchin spins off of Dirk Static, passes the Rube Rock shot off the blocker of Dugas. First real big test he's had in this game, and it was on a quick one from Rube Rock. Chipped up way up high by Adam Mayer, but it's gloved down by Connor Brown. Rennie gives a little pick to Woodhouse so that the Panthers can try and break back out. Rukrop gets around Raposo who forces him wide, allowing Dirk Sadie to pick the puck up. Adam Mayer loves it down. Races himself for a hit. Gets knocked down and Nick Grove, nice move through his legs, has Dirk Static score! It's in the back of him. Matt Rukrop. And it's a one goal lead for the Avalanche. Nick Bro made a nice play to keep that in, but Adam Mayer starts it as the play starts offside. Adam Mayer goes to the outside and he protects the puck. Then he gets a little bit of support. And then Bro going to the net, goes through his legs first, trying to make the pass across. And he ends up putting it off the defenseman Rene. And it goes into the top corner past Schneider. An unlucky goal to say the least, but that's the kind of goal that it looks like it's going to take for the Avs tonight. Face off one too cleanly, right back to Schneider who covers up. Face off coming to his left. They gave up a quick goal last game, and they got a quick goal in the second period. It took them just over a minute to get it. The Avalanche are setting up in the offensive zone, getting their shots through, and it's really been paying off for them tonight. Henry 
manages to get the puck to the boards, but it's almost tipped up, and it's a potential two on one. Ezo can't get it as falling down as Raposa to try and block the lane and force Peter Ezo to miss the puck. Ezo, nice little move around Raposo. Ezo throws it down. Belani can't get it and he chases it after it. McPhee. Lachlan McPhee to Raposo. Raposo back to McPhee. Crosses one well up to the center ice. Van Lue gets poked away from by Tristan Burke. Derek Raposo to the center ice. Macklin McPhee chips it into the offensive zone. Carl Canary first on the puck. Instead decides to leave it for Macklin who takes one high off the glove of Eric Schneider. And it's a big hit in the corner. Laid out by Macklin McPhee on Tristan Burke. Ryan Ellis, behind the net. Finds Thomas Young, who finds Jaron Hill. He gets around Luke Crocher, gets it almost stolen away, and Tristan Burns up with the puck. He dumps it down, it's an icy call as they did not cross the center ice. Now they're doing a really good job once again at getting pressure on those pucks. As once again, Pelham is having a very difficult time getting in and staying into the Ancaster zone. It's another period of mostly avalanche hockey going on in the Pelham zone. We can see that Rude Rock having a few words with a linesman over something. Or Kurt Villani, it looks like. Young pushes the puck forward and head coach has some words. Mark Barrick. You can hear him from all the way over the years. Upset about something, I'm not 100% sure what though. Kayla McPhee has a shot that was deflected, tied up beautifully by Ryan Ellis with Matthew Bridgewater coming across the other side. Great body check from Ben Hadanaka. Thomas Young battling hard, but Bridgewater who's at the circles Squapla spins back on the fortune from Young. Breaking up the ice. It's Hadanaka. He spins back. He finds Bridgewater. Bridgewater dumps it down. And he and his linemates go for a change. Luke Croucher. Great move pass. Yeah, Squapless! Shot just missed a hard shot that just missed Schneider. Back out in front. Hadanaka had it tipped away from him. Luke Croucher steals it. Curls, drag, shot, into Schneider, just missed on the rebound by Adam Mayer. Avalanche are buzzing around Eric Schneider, and Young manages to force it out of the zone. Another couple opportunities for the Pelham Panthers to get it out, and the Avalanche go hard on the puck. Luke Croucher makes a wonderful play to keep it in. He curls and drags and just misses it, and then only just missing that with the ass for scoring another goal. Quick pass that was behind Brenecki, and it's Rutherford who gets knocked down by by Thomas Young and he's getting a penalty. Cross-checking to Thomas Young on Brady Rutherford who tried to stay on his feet but managed to get knocked down. From my angle over here, I didn't quite think that was a cross-checking penalty. I thought it was a clean, effective wipeout along the boards. A little dangerous because Rutherford fell. I didn't quite see the two-handers from here but the referee's a lot closer so we'll have to go with what he calls. The fifth power play for the Avalanche it hasn't done anything. There's zero for four as of right now, hoping to strike. What do you think they can do to get past Schneider? Well, they need to go down in front of the net instead of trying to do the long shots, as Van Loon will try here. He gets that one through and misses high, but they've tried that all night, and so far it hasn't worked. Such a hard shot, you could really hear that ping off the glass. They're setting a close call at the line. Mayer through a, through a crowd. Got to the blocker, off the crossbar! From Liam Van Loon twice now, he's just missed the top corner. Van Loon in front, off of Kennery in front. He tried to get out of the way, screening Schneider. Hadanaka surveys down to Berkstadi. To Hadanaka, he plays pitch and catch. Adam Mayer falling at the side and hurt. It looks like Ryan Ellis is hurt at the side. He's 
Gets up Ginger off the crossbar, Van Ruin a third time in a row. And Ellis is having some trouble skating right now. Oh, that was Andrew, Andrew Rennie. He's still going as the puck is back in his own end. It's it looked like he took an awkward fall. I'm not exactly sure what happened. He was battling with Mayer, and he just fell over awkwardly. Might have fallen on his hip as it was deflected out in front. Luke Croucher, 49 seconds in the power play. Chipped up off of a shot from Dirk Stadig, and Rennie can finally get off. Trooper that he is uh, staying on the ice. He had no choice, realistically. But the Az are doing a good job of moving the puck around, a lot of passing. But once again, they, they're not generating much from inside the five feet, but inside five feet of the net. They're taking all their shots from outside of the slot. They're taking it from the outside of the circles. What they need to do is get inside the circles and inside the, uh, closer to the goalie to try to get some shots because Schneider's on his game right now. And these long shots are either hitting him or he's making great positional saves. Panthers dump it down to Ryan Dingus who leaves it for Derek Raposo. Raposo still sitting on one goal in the season. Quick pass across to Croucher. Raposo has Croucher at his position. Pass it off to him. Croucher from the corner just missing Tanner Benecki as it looked like he thought he was going to Bridgewater who's way closer to Luke Croucher. Croucher gets shoved down by Chris Weber. Penalty over as it's passed down to the point. Raposo took a deflection off of Butterfield and the Panthers can't get a breakout pass to, to Thomas Young and it's an icing call against them. And that was a golden opportunity for Ben Woodhouse and instead of taking the shot while he's in the slot, he passes off. I think he should have definitely shot the puck. He had a lane to go to the net and unfortunately, he decides to pass it off. So, a, shot, a, a chance that could have gone, but unfortunately goes and ends up by the boards. And we've seen both he and Had Mac, but they love to make those extra passes. Sometimes it just... Sometimes it bites them in the butt, and this time, I believe it did. Had Mac chips it towards Grill, who puts it down to his defenseman. Adam Scholes circles around. He's picking up some speed. Gets on Rutherford after a pass to Weber. Weber maintaining the flexion, but it hit Ryan Dugas. Tristan Byrne. Cross case deflected. Great stick play from Brady Rutherford. Puck chipped up. Intercepted by Chris Weber. Shot into the glove of Ryan Dugas on a horrible turnover from Kalen McPhee. I saw something that. Ken's really going to like, he's probably going to give Kalen a bit of a talking to. Should have gotten that puck out. He should have, but the good thing for the Avalanche so far is that Dirk Static, not, uh, my apologies, not Dugas. Ryan Dugas. The D got, uh, got me a little mixed up there, but okay. Ryan Dugas has been sharp when he's been needed to call upon, uh, which hasn't been often in this game. He's been very, he hasn't been very busy back there, but one thing I've noticed is at the other end, Eric Schneider, almost after after almost every whistle, he seems to shadow his positioning. So he's definitely keeping his mind sharp and trying to keep his limbs moving so he doesn't get too seized up from any kind of stoppage of play. Kyle Kenny wins the faceoff, but it's Francesco Gigliotti chips it past Dirk Stadig. Simpson comes across and tips it to McPhee. Kyle Kennery across the line to Macklin McPhee gets knocked on by Francesco. Off the pad after it was fanned on by Kyle Kennery and it's thrown down low but it's a turnover and Anthony Gigliotti going after it but it's Homer that gets there. Rugra goes high and standing up to make the save was Ryan Dugas. And the man they don't want to turn it over to is Matt Rugrock. He's been on fire with the 13 points that he's set in his last 10 games. He comes in, he rips one, but once again, Dugas hits, gets the shot high, loves it, no rebound. So he's been pretty sharp, although he hasn't had a lot of shots to face. In the past few times, that's where they've been aiming, it's up high, but they've been aiming it cl uh, too close to his chest or his mask, so it's been around to the easy stop for him. Yeah, Ryan Dugas has a really good glove hand, so it's going to be hard to beat him there. Whereas if you're facing Tanner Shepard, we've noticed that his glove hand is a little bit weaker, and that would be the spot to go on him if you're the, if you're 
uh, uh, facing off against the Avalanche. Whitehouse tried to feed Adam Mayer in the slot, but it's intercepted as Peter Izzo turns it over to Nick uh, to Nicholas Bro. Bro across crease pass to Brunecki. Brunecki, Woodhouse cuts through again. He's done that multiple times. Pass it off to Raposo though, and it's chipped down low. Nick Bro out in front. Can't set up out of man as the Panthers break out two and two. Kurt Villani. Rocha off the stick and Dugas easily deflects it out. Despite the fact that Ben Woodhouse has been able to make multiple plays, especially with that little cut that he likes to do at the top of the circles, he ends up passing it or just not being able to do much with it because the Panthers are on to him and they're not letting him get much space afterwards. And at some point he's just going to have to start shooting that puck. He's had it on a stick almost the entire two periods that we've played so far. Every time he's on the ice he seems to have the puck. So he's definitely got to take a couple chances shooting that puck. Crutcher spins off. He passed it down as he faked the shot initially and it's in the corner by Hadanaka. Croucher has Rudrock all over him, falls down. Hadanaka tries to get Bridgewater's stick but it ends up in his feet and Copperchin just misses Rudrock as it's tipped out by Bernecki. Copperchin, the two 22s go together and Raposo ends up picking the puck up. Bernecki. Quick backhand pass to Hadanaka, crosses the line, goes around Schultz, gets to the corner. Hadanaka gets in front, and Thomas Young with a great defensive play gets his stick in the lane. Jared Hill tries to get around Croucher, manages to get the puck out, but the Avalanche pick it up. Avalanche then turn it over themselves to Young. Quick pass to Kaplan who ends it high, bounces back out in front, but no one there for Palm. Hill, hound dogging Tanner Renecki. Avalanche calm the puck down as it's passed up to Renecki on a high pass that gets deflected down. Shatter almost gets tangled up with Ryan Hill since he deflects it off the glass. Young deflects it, deflects it down for Weber, but it's way out of his reach as Stropolis ends up picking the puck up. Woodhouse gets on his man, gets hauled down, no penalty call against. The Panthers, Woodhouse gets out in front, pass across to Kaylin McPhee, down at Scrumpless who's at the point, and he takes a shot that went high, Simpson now down low. Looks like Scrumpless is playing defense, so they have four forwards out there right now. Puck thrown down low, and it's chipped up by Weber, Puck danced around, great move from Jared Hill, but he can't get anything to go. Great stick play from Justin Homer. He tries to dance around the Chris Weber. Fails to do so, but McPhee picks it up and he gets it. It's a breakaway. Here he comes. Backhand Chad just hit the pad. Chad Maurice had a beautiful opportunity. Couldn't get anything on it. Unfortunately, he just lost control of the puck. It was a little bit difficult. The puck bounced slightly on him as he was receiving it, making it very difficult for him to keep control, and that kind of wasted his breakaway opportunity of relegating him to the outside. Big hit coming from Macklin McPhee on Andrew Rennie, and the puck is in the avalanche zone. That was a quick poke check from Dugas to get the puck away. Van Loon loses control, and the avalanche keep getting back into the zone of the Panthers as they now grab the puck. Cherry picking at the other end, but he puts himself offside. Kurt Villani. Cherry picked a little too hard, and he has to, and the whistle gets blown by the linesman. You can see uh, the coaching staff not too happy with the call. They thought it was onside. But Kurt Villani, that all started because when he was going in on Tanner Brunecki, Ryan Dugas saw that Brunecki had let up a little bit, so he goes to poke the puck away because maybe Brunecki thought it was going to be an icing call. He pokes the puck away, and Villani goes flying back first into the boards. So he's a little slow to get up. And then the play goes back in the Pelham zone, and he's, wait at the, he's waiting at the blue line, and he just calls for it. He's got himself what could have been a breakaway. Adelaide cycled the puck down low off of Macklin stick. Almost intercepted. Van Loon gets hit hard by Butterfield, but he ends up on the ice. Macklin McPhee trying to dance around some players, and 
Van Loon gets pushed down and he and Butterfield are tied up. McPhee runs into Rugrock. McPhee off the pot down low and Macklin gets lit up at the side of the net. And the Avalanche just will not say die on some great offensive pressure. Thank you again, Lord. And it seems to be a penalty against Liam Van Loon. Took a little took a slashing call against what well, I would assume would have been Butterfield when he tied him up. Didn't quite actually catch the slash from Van Loon, so not quite sure where the referee saw that one, but the first power play of the night for Pelham. As they could they could come back in this game, they could tie it back up. But some great down low pressure again from the Az. They're getting all over the defense. Butterfield, once again, you said his name multiple times. He was stuck to Van Loon that time, so not only is the puck sticking to him, but other players are sticking to him too. He's had blocks, he's had hits, and he's making great defensive plays. So I think it's been a very good night for Butterfield. Oh, butts in front! Oh! Quick brothers and penalties coming up to the Avalanche. A bad bounce off the board. Goodness was out of his net, and Weber nailed the iron. I couldn't believe it. The puck went off of one of the signs in the back on the boards, flew right back in front of the net. And of course, Dugas is not expecting that. And Weber had an empty net to contest with. He threw his stick out, not literally, but kept the stick in his hand. And Dugas robbed him. And I can't believe it wasn't a it wasn't a power play goal for the Panthers. They can't believe it either. But they will get a five on three from this. They'll have 144 and 5 on 3 with 7.47 in the... And it's Ben Woodhouse in the penalty box. Didn't quite catch what it was for. Probably a hold if I had to guess. I think that was what the referee said. Yeah. I was about to say the power play is working at 12.68%, 22nd in the league, which is not very good. And they're about to see if they can put those stats up a little more as Trevor Meacham passes it across. Scholes back down low to... Chris Weber, the almost goal scorer for the Panthers. Young gets the puck loose to Scholes at the point. Took a bounce off of Hadamaka, one of the best penalty killers for the Avalanche. Jared Hill, wouldn't he love to score? Hill has some time, but passes it off to Scholes. Scholes, not a very smart shot. It was no angle. Dugas cut it off and it went into the screening. You can see Dugas and Hadanaka drawing up some plans together. Although Hadanaka will go off the ice as Adam Mayer is going to be the centerman here. The Avs have to make sure that they clog up the middle and prevent any passes going creased, uh, across the crease because that's the most dangerous way to score on a 5-on-3. Capper Chip. Throws it across. Adam Schultz. Pass across. Ezo is... The Butterfield is at the other side. And it's almost shipped out by Adam Mayer, but a great stick left from Connor Brown. Adam Schultz deflects that down, but Eric Schneider comes out. Schultz instead picks it up. Adam Schultz sets up the power play unit as Catholic and Dodge left the Butterfield. Back out for Schultz. That is blocked. Great play from Kalen McPhee, possibly saving a goal. Both Jordan Simpson and Kayla McPhee making wonderful blocks. First one goes to Kalen, and I believe the second one was Jordan Simpson. Either way, both of them doing really good work on the penalty kill, blocking shots. That's exactly what I said they need to do. Block off that middle and prevent some cross creases. Under 10 seconds left in the five on three. Meacham waits, passing across to Rudolph. Penalty now over five on four. Meacham! Stand on a great defensive stick play as McPhee takes his number seven and forces him to take a weak shot onto Ryan Dugas. And so far it's it looks very lackadaisical. Pelham isn't really pushing the play. And you can tell because a lot of their players are standing still. They are moving around like the Avalanche have been on their last few power plays. And if you want to make sure, out of 5-on-3, you have tons of space to move and you should be moving around. This 5-on-4, they'll have less space, so they're going to have to move around a little bit more to try to open up some space. They only have 12 seconds to work on it, though, so they have to try to get it done quickly. Adam Schultz can't keep it in. He and Butterfield have been on for the entire two-plus minutes. That the power play was on, and now the power play is on for 5-on-5. No one 
power play unit has been able to strike as Jaron Hill fakes, takes a shot deflected by the stick of Derek Raposo. Adam Shores hands, hands it down to himself. Jaron Hill picks it up, breaks across center, has Kenry across, and it's Thomas Young getting hound dogged by Luke Karcher. Dirk Static passing across, and the Avalanche start picking up across center. Nice move by Raposo. She took a shot right into the chest of Eric Schneider. 5-12 left in the second period. Even the big man's got some nice moves. He was going through that center ice pretty smoothly. A weak shot that Schneider will take right into his chest. But Ryan Dugas was really dialed in on that 5-on-3. And both goaltenders are looking very, very sharp tonight. Only one goal so far, and you can tell because both goalies have been so good, there hasn't been a lot of goals going in. Referees say that Panthers are going to put the puck out of Peter Izzo. Came charging in and forced Terry Renecki to pass it across. Great interception from Kurt Villani. Breaking out now, it's Homer. Justin Homer. Bouncing in front, can't get the puck to go, and he's taking a hooking call. His, he's in the arm and the body of Ryan Ellis. And, and that, that's a clear cut hooking call. He tried to throw his hands up saying, hey, he's got my stick, but the evidence is right into his armpit. It's rather easy call for the referees to make. And he's still not happy about the call. But unfortunately, as you mentioned, it was right in his arm and his body. Whether or not he, the player intentionally held on longer, it was still a hooking call. It's a lot easier to sell the hook than it is uh, to sell the holding the stick than it is to sell the hooking. It's a lot easier for a player to say, hey, look, he's hooking me, but I'm really holding it. So. Well, Captain Chim, the face-off draw is Scholes, he's back out on the, on the face-off draw. And Trevor Meacham this time, his defensive partner, was blockered into the corner and out of play by Ryan Dugan. So the Avalanche go with five straight power plays, and then now it's been three straight power plays, including a five-on-three for Pelham. And still, we only have one goal and no power play goals yet to speak of. This is unheard of, especially with one of the better offensive teams in the Avalanche. Avalanche are scoring just over four goals a game. Bet their ninth best scoring team in the division. And they goal only managed one goal so far. And there's another penalty coming up. This one coming to Pelham. Their power play is about to end. Noah Copperchain is getting a slashing call. We're about to go to four on four. And the Avalanche, at the, end, at the end of this, will get a short 29 second power play. But there's been a lot of penalties in this game, and nothing to really show for them. All this is really doing is padding the penalty killing totals for both teams. And making the game last longer than it needs to be. Also padding the penalty minute totals for both teams as well. Out in front, Van Loon takes the sh takes the shot. It was scrummed loose by Adam Scholes, who gets knocked down after the fact, and Scholes gets back at the puck. Scholes, oh, he gets wiped out by Van Loon. He's getting a penalty. Van Loon and Scholes have been battling all night long, and he's taking an undisciplined penalty. A power play is coming for the Panthers, and this will be an odd situation. It's a four on three coming. As no, it's Scholes going to the penalty box. I thought for sure it was Liam Van Loon. Even Scholes is pointing at himself, wondering where did I get the penalty from? He got it for roughing. I am shocked. I thought for sure that was going to be a penalty to Van Loon. I thought the hit was a little bit late. He had already taken the guy out of the play and he finished him anyway, but the referee says that Adam Scholes is going to get the penalty. So a four on three power play coming for the ads. Lots of ice in. Back to that hit. That looked almost like an old school sweeping hip check by Liam Van You don't Lund. see those very often anymore. Especially not for Or at all, really. Van Loon's not known as a hitter, but he's been hitting tonight, and the Avalanche are setting up on the power play as Dirk Static finds Van Loon. Van Loon, he likes Ooh. the ball, and it gets ready in a delicate spot, but he gets right back up. To his credit, 
It looked like it might have just avoided, but that's why you wear a cup. Brunecki. Circles. Off the other side, taken by Van Loon. Dirk Stata can't grab it as Thomas Young gets intercepted on a nice stick play from Tanner Brunecki. Two is your slash at 15.48. Tanner Brunecki waiting for his teammates to get in position as he passes to Static. Static has Young on him. Static cuts. Nice move. Static holds gloved easily by Schneider as it looked like Static had something going. That shot looked like it was heading just slightly high in the crossbar. And look who it is! Mr. Liam Van Loon. Oh no, I, I apologize. That was, that was Ben Woodhouse getting into it. Van Loon actually off to the side. Oh, and there are more coincidentals. Looks like Trevor Meacham is once again being sent to the draw uh, the locker room and Ben Woodhouse, I imagine, would be joining him. This is a one-nothing game, so this kind of I apologize, game. that's actually looks like Kyle Kennery is going to the box. Dirk Sta uh, Dirk oh, Static is going. That's they don't want to lose. Yeah. But this it's a one-nothing game. This this type of behavior is not really necessary. It isn't, but it's gotten they've got they've both gotten under each other's skin. They're both getting rather feisty with each other. This game still a four on three though, 20 seconds left. This game is still up for grabs for both teams. Alma is currently currently holding the lead. But with penalties constantly going and no one's power play is doing anything at uh, this rate, it'll just end up being a win for the Avalanche. And the Avalanche are about to have a 29 second five on three. Once this penalty Brunecki. to Justin Holmes. Hadanaka down low, taken away by the stick of Schneider. Raposo gets the puck. Hadanaka, it's a five on three right now for the Avalanche. Hadanaka puts it back down to Tanner Brunecki. He's got Van Loon. He waits. He has Raposo with him, and instead he steps to the middle of the post. That's the third time he's rung iron in this second period. Van Loon just. Not able to get past the red help for Eric Schneider. Pass across. Bruce Ryder scores! What a pass by alone in the slot, and the power play finally connects. What is that, the seventh time they've had a power play and they finally connect? Bridgie, Bridgewater's 21st, and that's right as Caprich Jones coming out of the box. And that will knock off the other. Power, uh, the other penalty that was on the board for Pelham. So they don't get to continue on the power play, but finally, Ken and the boys get to celebrate a power play goal. And now one for eight tonight, which is not a very good stat. No, no, not very, not very good, no. You're scoring on one eighth of your penalty, uh, your power plays, you're not doing a very good job. Especially when you have such a, when you have an above average penalty, a power play unit. It's not something you want to be seeing. As Tristan Burr takes a little liberty at Ben Woodhouse, almost hits him in the head. Tristan Burr working hard along the Avalanche forward and it's tipped right back down. Nick Bro gets pinned along the glass by Ellis, but Adam Mayer tries to pass out in front. Chipped up by Chad Murray. playing some defense and he chips it away from Peter Izzo. Now that the Panthers are down, do you think they're going to be more physical than they already have been? It'll be kind of difficult to be more physical. This game has had a lot of hits, a lot of scrums, and a lot of yiatas between both teams. Especially it's a result in a lot of power plays and a lot of penalties. McPhee can't get that puck as a bounce off his stick. Boxes up Capuchin, giving Scrapple some time to play the puck. McPhee moves it to Brown and shoulders him into the boards. Kalen McPhee passes to Scrapple. One minute left in the second period, three nuts in the score for the Avalanche. Adam Schultz has Kennery on him. Deflected off the stick of Justin Homer and deflected wide and hit Adam Scholz's stick. Matt Rugrock spins off of a hit, still has possession. Great puck control, but it's Homer 
who gets the puck, and he gets hit hard by Butterfield. A little bit days after the fact was Homer. A bit of a hold there, a cross check to the back, and he's getting a penalty. Macklin McPhee's getting a penalty after an undisciplined cross check to the back of R uh, Matt Rugrock. He was battling with Rugrock and gave him an undisciplined cross check and another power play. There's 27 seconds remaining, and Pelham needs this to work in the second period. They'd rather go into the second, into the third period, down by one than down by two. They don't have too much time to set up a power play, but luckily that means if they do not score, they'll start off the period with a power play, which is always a good way to start off the period. The unfortunate part when you start off is you you break it up, you've broken up the momentum, and you also start off at center ice, which means you don't get the added advantage of starting in the zone. If you were the players in this situation. Would you rather kill off the 27 seconds and start the period with a power play or score right now? For Pelham, I'd rather score right now. It's, it's much more important for them to get the lead now than it would be for them to wait for the third period. But we'll see what they do. Chris Rubber getting pressured and it's deflected off of his stick. It's in the corner to the left of Degas. 15 seconds left in the period and no movement of the puck, so the whistle is blown by the referee. Because for penalty number 25, Mac McPhee, to a penalty and 10 minute misconduct for boarding in 1833. So he gets it for, for boarding, and which makes an sense. An extra 10, which is why he was escorted off the ice by the linesman. But deflected down, and that'll almost surely do it for the power play in this, uh, for the period. Eric Schneider holds it. Adam Schultz takes a quick look at the clock. Light on the pass to Rudrock. As it goes, and it's second period now over. Avalanche lead through two periods. Score of 2 0. Little has been done on the power play. Let's see if this intermission will help get the Panthers a power play goal. something that's been advantageous. Both teams have had many power plays and Bridgewater is the only one with a goal on a power play for the Avs after about eight chances. And Pelham, this is about their fifth or sixth power play and they haven't really generated much either. So at this point, five on five hockey is the best way to go. And it looked like Eric Schneider forgot that there was a, a penalty. He put his arm up almost as to say icing, but realized very quickly that uh, his team's on the power play. Well, a little too lax it is to start the period, but he's been fantastic today, only surrendering twice, and none of them were his fault at all, so they're hoping they can keep this going as Matt Rubrock can't keep the puck in. The Avalanche put it right back down to Schneider. Less than a minute in the penalty kill for the Avalanche. Panthers start up with Thomas Young. He gets around Kyle Penner and dumps it down into the Avalanche end. Matt Rubrock drops it down. For Jared Hill, Young at the point, shot fanned on by Scholes, and it's Hammond right back down into the Panther zone. So far, the Panthers have had barely any time on the power play in this third period. Thomas Young puts it down, and the Avalanche will once again going to dump it down as they not even a single shot on net for the Panthers. No shots, no time on attack is a little more surprising here. The Avs have done a very good job, and Pelham is not... They don't look like they want this power play to work. Jared Hill tries to cut across, but a beautiful puck to from Raposo, and the power play is now over for the Panthers. That penalty box is a little crowded for the Avs. They had three players in there. A couple of them serving 10-minute misconduct, so... Simpson banks it off the boards. 
Crouches, chips it up. Woodhouse throws a cut through two players. Gets the puck back, but it's chipped away off of his stick. Jordan Simpson wins it around the boards. Capricic banks it off the boards, but it doesn't get out as a nice kick play. Peter Izzo has a partial breakaway. He gets loose. Izzo glues save by Ryan Tugas, a huge showstopper on Peter Izzo. Peter Izzo with a great interception and another penalty coming to the abs, but a great interception by Izzo. He gets away from his man, Brunecki, who tried everything he could to, stole, uh, to slow him down, but the little man got through with a nice shot. The better save by Dugas preserves the 2-0 lead, and the Oz are going back to the penalty kill. Jordan Simpson is getting a roughing call, and the Panthers, who have yet to equal, who have yet to get anything going on the power play, after an abysmal one on the last attempt, are hoping to set up and finally break the stranglehold that is Ryan Dugas. Rugrock, waved out. In comes Anthony Gigliotti. Gigliotti loses it to Hadanaka. Great defensive win. And the Avs can't get it out on a nice hand play from Butterfield. He dumps Hadanaka, who tries to go get him the hand. Matt Rugrock, at the top of the circle. Butterfield chips it down low, and Francesco Gigliotti along with his brother are out on this power play and Hadamaka falls down as Matt Rugra can't get it. It's chipped out by the Avalanche. Pello, circle back with Adam Schultz. He's had a lot of power play time and has yet to do anything with that. Turned over at the line as the Avalanche are doing a good job penalty killing and Francesco just dodges a hit. Behind the play though, Kyle Kenner is getting tied up with Anthony Gigliotti as those two come together for some quick words. This has been another abysmal power play. They haven't had any time on attack again. And no shots either. Another puck that goes deflected out of play. They're going to get a face off in the zone, but they haven't had any consistent power play time in the Ancaster zone and you can really credit their defense and their forwards who have been very aggressive on that puck and making sure that they get it all the way down the ice and it just Pelham has had no chance on the power play to set up. Shot quick one by Weber and it's kicked out to the point. Ryan Ellis has it. Pass back down is Tristan Burr. Haven't seen him on the power play much often and it's tipped out by the Avalanche. Ryan Ellis calms the puck down. Passing over to Weber, who breaks through center. Weber, in the corner, gets bodied, but shakes it off. Tries to put it out in front, off the skate of Tristan Burr, and back down into the Panthers zone. 18 seconds left in the Panthers power play. Puck chipped up to the other side. Thomas Young rings it around. Kaelin McPhee lost it in his skates, but it's Whipped around by Crutcher. Power play now over, back to five on five. But thrown on net as turned over at the blue line. Crutcher trying to surprise Schneider. Jared Hill got the puck poked away from him. Dirk Static passing one off the feet of Rutherford. Coming back the other way was Jared Hill. Hill on the outside has Raposo circling him. Hill, nice defensive work from Raposo, turns the puck over. Dirk Stanek has it as Crutcher picks the puck up. Luke Crutcher with some speed. Nice move. Just on side, Crutcher. Gets behind the net, gets hit by Butterfield, but picked up by Rutherford. Bernecki. Shot, bouncing off the blocker and goes to the other corners. Schneider just managed to get a piece. Peter Izzo, passing it down to Schultz, who gives it to his defensive partner, Butterfield. Butterfield to Schultz. Hadanaka starts heading the other way. He's got Liam Van Loon with him, drops it. Van Loon shot into the glove hand of Mike, of uh, 
Eric Schneider and Butterfield boxes out the Avalanche forward. And this game has been a gem defensively if you're the Avalanche. They could do without all the penalties, but they've had a they've done a very good job of preventing a lot of offense. There have been very few dangerous shots that Dugas has had to save barring a breakaway, but Avalanche have done a very good job defensively and they've been able to keep the play in the zone of the Fallen Panthers most of this game. Great defensive play from Connor Brown as he had a, as an opportunity from Hadnock that came and he wasn't able to whack the loose puck in. Connor Brown ends up breaking his stick afterwards and has to go to the bench to get a new one. Simpson, puck deflected off of a Panther stick and it goes down into the zone and it's an icing call against the Avalanche. So it almost feels like it almost feels like a rodeo. There's been so many players just pairing up with each other and really getting under each other's skin. Ben Loon and Butterfield. Ben Loon's had about two or three different pairs. He's gone with Meacham. He's gone with Butterfield. Hadanaka and Scholes have not had a, have been exchanging pleasantries tonight. Hadanaka's also gone with Meacham. There's been a lot of people who have gone with Meacham tonight. He seems to be getting under a lot of people's skin. Hadanaka has a puck intercepted as Chris Weber heads the other way. Simpson can't get the puck, so McPhee has to step up and grabs the puck. Van Loon trying to get an indirect pass. Oh, and a beautiful defensive play by Andrew Rennie as Van Loon was heading up away, although he might have been offside as it didn't have enough momentum. Hadanaka way offside as Hadanaka made a backwards pass and Homer was not able to stay onside. In his own end, McPhee banks it off the boards, almost intercepted by Bro, but Jared Hill Breaks across the blue line, gets pressured and turned the puck over as Raposo got his body out in front. Gigliotti intercepts. Jared Hill tries to get around his def the defender McPhee. McPhee gets the puck off of his stick. Battling hard is Adam Mayer. Gigliotti falls down and McPhee has a three on two going. He's not Kennery. Kennery, shot. Great defensive block by Butterfield. Another huge block by him. Off the boards, Butterfield can't clear it. He goes for a hit, but just evading the hit was Bernecki. Out in front, Kennedy couldn't get it. Hit off of a Eric Schneider. Woodrock on the turnover. He's three on one. Woodrock, one hit on his stick. And a great defensive back check from Raposo. Raposo tries to find Bridgewater. Bridgewater wins the battle on Tristan Burr, who hits it hard into the boards. A pass out to Nolan in front, and Weber throws it up. Croucher gets hit by Rugrock, who has the puck. Turns it over at the blue line. Rugrock can't get it as it was hit off the defender for the Avalanche. Luke Croucher the other way on Ryan Ellis. Puck Owen falling down hard was Luke Croucher as he tried to lay a hit. Luke Croucher's back on his feet in the slot. Can't get the shot. Woodhouse circles. Rugrock lays him out. What a hit. But Croucher gets back up and is first to the puck. Luke Croucher, one hand on his stick, chips it to Bridgewater, and the Avalanche are all over the Panthers. Puck chipped out. Corvalani, outside step, hooks up. Puck in front. Izzo couldn't get a shot. And it looks like a hooking call. And a hooking goal will be coming to the Avalanche's Yanni Skropolis. Matt Rugrock has a little bit of a fire lit under him right now. He was throwing some big hits, trying to create some offense, but he was eyeing Tanner Brunecki earlier. He was face-to-face -face with him as they were, the Avalanche were coming down back to the Pelham zone. Looked like they were trying to, he was trying to drop the gloves with him. Giving him a few words of a encouragement, we'll call them. But another power play, and I believe that's the, the eighth power play for Pelham now. And it wasn't it wasn't Scopless, it was Van Loon taking his second minor of the game. Shot from Young, took a bounce, Trevor Meacham can't handle it. Thomas Young, to Meacham at the point. Great play. Oh, and a great check from Weber, and he takes a late shot, and 
Bernanke takes exception to that late shot, but what a play from Hananaka. He almost had a, he almost actually ended up getting that puck way up to a streaking the back end, but it was Weber who cross-shut into the ice. High sticking it. That would have been a great play by Bernanke, uh, by Ben Hadanaka, as he had Justin Homer breaking. But what's more impressive is Chris Weber had the puck, he still shot it, and started through a stick and still got the puck. Even though it wouldn't have counted, you good to know that Dirk Stad uh Ryan Dugas, my apologies, is on his game. He started heading towards the net because he saw the penalty. He tried to go to the bench, he's like, oh, we're going to have to get onto the bench, but... Chris Weber throws it on net, and Duke is like, yeah, I'm still going to throw my stick at him. I'm still going to get it. Ben Woodhouse wins that puck, and it's played up by Dugas off the boards. Woodhouse chases after Woodhouse, one on three. Takes the body and shows Manchester grab the loose puck. Van Woon has Scholes on him, and Scholes falls down, and the puck is covered up by Scholes. It was underneath him, and the whistle is blown. Thank us, Billy, the Brady. So I believe that's the ninth penalty to both teams at this point. So in fact, it was Scrappers who got the original penalty, but the board says 21 Van Loon. Yeah, a little bit of a mistake there. Avalanche will end up with a 17 second power play after this is done. Great reverse hit from Ben. Ben Woodhouse, he's working really hard as Adam Scholes is trying to get that puck away from the feisty on forward. Woodhouse, working hard and Butterfield can't get it as Peter Izzo starts speeding out of the zone. Great hit check from Static a bit too early and Izzo just managed to stop up before the hit managed to completely connect. Spinning around is Static, a heads up pass to Woodhouse who's one on one. Shot off the stick and high as it hit Meacham. Puck's out of play, whistle blown. Just past the 10 minute mark of the third period. Still 2 nothing for the Avalanche. Pelham really needs a, a kick in the butt right now because they haven't had a lot of life in this game. I mean, they've had a lot of scrappiness, but they haven't, they haven't put that onto the ice in a way that would be more productive for them. They haven't outworked the Avalanche most of the game. They haven't had more time on attack. They haven't outshot them. They haven't done much offensively, and that's why they find themselves down by two, and they're lucky. It could easily be a lot worse. Eric Schneider's played great, and the Avs have also missed on a lot of opportunities that they should have capitalized on, especially when you've had eight power plays and only scored once. This is definitely a night that the coaches are going to want to look at the drawing board and figure out a new system for their power plays. It's coming up the other way. On the avalanche, Raposo, pass it across, Hadanaka, when I was crouching I took the shot and it was deflected off of the stick. Buck reverse, Bridgewater out in front and Kapuchin at the end of the power play, at the end of the four and four, dumps it down. Ten second power play for the avalanche, looks like they won't get much time to do anything as McPhee takes turned around by Young. Back to five on five. 8.55 left in the third period. Avalanche waiting behind the net and they start heading out. Great move from Homer. Homer, one on one, gets it through the legs of Ryan Ellison. He's still got the puck. He reverses it. And Lou just misses a one timer as he was in the slot on a great heads up pass from Hadanaka. Justin Homer, battling hard with Chris Weber. Hadnaka, one hand, keeps it on side. What a great play, Van Loon has it. In the feet, Homer spins and it rolled off the end of his stick at the avalanche of getting hard on the body. Jared Hill, cuts back, ends up driving the puck. Ryan Ellis took a bit of a shot from Van Loon after he tried to dump it down low. Tanner Brunecki finds Van Loon. Van Loon sees his teammates are changing, so he dumps it into the zone. As are still doing a wonderful job on that four check. Pelham's defense has had so much trouble getting the puck out and trying to keep the puck away from those speedy, crafty forwards that the Avalanche have. Ryan Ellis 
Chips one up. Matt Rugrox first against her, but it's still a nice and call against the Panthers. And it's a too many men penalty coming up. That's why, not an icing call. Although maybe a little bit of both. Wait, I did hear the referee say that there are six Panthers on the ice. No signal coming from the referee, so I guess it was just an icing call. Oh. I definitely heard the, the referee from over here saying six. I figured maybe he was talking about the players, but I could very well be wrong about that. I guess he might have just given them a fun little warning that, hey, if you don't get off soon, I'm going to call you for a too many men. <laughs> That's very kind of him. I'm sure that Ken probably isn't too happy. He probably wish he called that right away. But it's Assu- like I noticed. Yeah, it's assuming that's what happened. I, I could very well be wrong. I definitely heard him saying something about six, but, you know. Adam Mayer working on the puck. But Matt Rudolph gets there. He gets pushed forward by Kennery and Adam Scholes. Banks one off the glass, ends up into the netting. And this game is dwindling down to the last little bit as there's just under seven minutes left and the Panthers are exactly where they were when they started this game. Zero in their offensive categories. All right now it's like the Panthers are running downhill away from an avalanche as the Avs have put so much pressure on them. It's a, oh, it's a ball from an old saying. It's like a cat running away with its, legs between, with its tail between its legs. Great hit from Maurice on Rutherford. And Woodhouse is onside as Rutherford didn't go after the puck initially. There was a hand pass and Hadanaka tries to get a quick pass to Macklin McPhee, but whistle gets blown. I think Woodhouse thought it might have been touched by someone, but he's not going to win. That argument call's already made by the officials. So the, the face-off will come outside. The face-off will be right at that dot that the players are right next to. It looks like they're actually going to have it inside instead. Maybe the referees did make a mistake. They convened and... The linesman now dropping the puck inside the zone. Athlete's trying to set up for an offensive opportunity. Pelham probably wondering exactly why it's going into their zone. Referee going to give an explanation to Mike Mark Barrett. Whistle blown in. Face off. Ready as Woodhouse. Nice drop pass from Squapolis. Easy save from Schneider who. Looked like he was ready to dump it down, but no Pelham player was there to get the puck. McPhee giving Scrapple some pointers on where to sit. Puck run back by the Avalanche, but it's Rudolph who picks it up as he air lifts it to Noah Kaprichik. And he tries to find someone out in front, but a bit too far behind his Avalanche. Woodhouse falls over on the line. Lines can be tricky sometimes, they tripped him up. You gotta be careful, that blue line will trip you if it gives you the chance. Connor Brown just missed over the net. Uh, those, those are the type of shots that Pelham doesn't want people being, uh, their players taking. They want they wanted to take those kind of shots, they just want them to hit the net. Woodhouse, in front of Rutherford, stuck by Schneider, scroll down low. Net comes off as an avalanche player goes barreling into him. But a close call, and Schneider once more comes up huge. Grady Rutherford had a chance to smack that puck into the empty net. He wasn't able to lift it past the pad of Schneider, who was sprawled in the Eddie Eagle position. And then he got pushed right over top of the goaltender, along with his own momentum by Andrew Rene. Jeremy Hill off the faceoff win from the Panthers. Battling with Van Loon. Young puts it back to his defenseman. Ellis pass across the floor. Young. Panthers almost turn it over. Tristan Burr takes off both an outline and the linesman. Two for one for Tristan Burr. Van Loon gets his stick lifted a few times, but gets around. Ellis, what a play and a great save. Van Loon took it hard to the net on a nice cutout move. 
Van Loon chips it back to Tanner Bernecki as he's getting pressured. Puck turnovers. Thomas Young gets man, into the outlet zone. Man, we haven't seen that a lot tonight from Lee and Van Loon. He's been engaged in a lot of physical battles, but he finally finds some space and he ends up going to the net. A nice move, but Eric Schneider, who's been so good tonight, makes another great save. Butterfield stands up Van Loon as he ends up chipping the puck out and going for a change. 4.35 in the third period. Dugas smartly brings it along the grass, bounces off Bridgewater, skates, and it's almost turned over by Bridgewater as Weber was there. Weber is still trying to get after it, but Padanaku breaks out a nice cut. Beautiful move. Padanaku still has it, but he's muscled off by Adam Schultz. Cutting back off the glove. Great save from Schneider. Big hit from Butterfield. Raposo crosses it across. Shot by Woodhouse, deflected by him, and it's out in front by the Avalanche. Croucher has it. Croucher, pass it down low. Static, shot off of a player in front. Another block from Pelham, and Static can't believe it. Some great passing and some great forecheck once again leads to a bunch of great opportunities as Dirk Stadig had a great chance while he was in the high slot. That one unfortunately ended up being blocked by Peter Izzo. And multiple times tonight, that's where the Alves have been finding a lot of their offensive opportunities is those quick passes when, they're, when they have a player in the corner and another player gets into the slot between the circles or in the circles, they take a shot from there, but that's where the Panthers have also been done a good job of getting in the lane. And if they haven't blocked the shot, if it hasn't missed the target, it's been right on net for Eric Schneider to make the save, and he's been really good. Shot off the post! Panthers have an opportunity as Douglas was down! Close call and net mouse scrum! But the Panthers still can't capitalize. Ryan Dugas was flat on his stomach. All they had to do was lift it over him, and he's still able to keep it out. Peter Rizzo spinning around. He still has the puck. Throws it behind the net. Raposo turns the puck over. Caperton with his feet gets the puck. He's got Izzo in the slot, but has to circle. Great play from Raposo, the big man. Gets underneath of Caperton, forcing him to turn the puck over. But once again, Peter, uh, it was uh, Matt Rugroff, my mistake, with another turnover. But the Avalanche end up losing a stick flying from Nick Brown. And this is what the Pelham Panthers needed. It's a little too late, though. It's, they only have two and a half minutes. They have enough time to do it, but they need to make sure the rest of the time is spent in the Av zone. And Matt Rugroff has been showing why he's been so hot of late. He just gets underneath players, underneath their sticks, and forces turnovers. He just can't do much as it's... Oh, what an excellent attempt at a deflection from Rugak on his stomach. What that, that would his, have been amazing from his... He, he gets up, doesn't even see it. The puck's going to the front of the net. He swings with his one hand on his stick. Chris Weber forces McPhee on top of the net. Deflected off a high stick. They're saying it was the Avalanche who high-sticked it. It's Thomas Young can't get the puck. Nick Crow airmails it behind the Panthers defenseman. And finally Pelham getting some pressure. Like I said, this is what they, they've been needing this all game and they're getting it as literally as late as they possibly can in, in this game. Pick up some speed as Croucher, but he can't get around Gigliotti. Deflected out by the Avalanche. But once again, the Panthers are bringing on the offense. Butterfield passes it up. Chad Maurice had an excellent opportunity to break the shutout bid, but he ends up dumping it in. One-on-one -on -one right now, Woodhouse. He's got Butterfield with him. Poke check beautifully by Butterfield. Just over a minute left in this game. The Avalanche still with a 2-0 lead. Ben Woodhouse and Scrapless battling, but it's chipped back out by Peter Izzo. Scrapless. So goes out in front. Almost turned over to Adam Scholl. And that was before the line. That shouldn't have been called an icing. Never crossed the line. Yeah. It, it, the player was close enough to get it. And the referee, the linesman made the decision to call that. 57 seconds remaining. We'll see if that comes back to bite the avalanche in any way. If it does, we know we'll be hearing from Ken. Yes, we will definitely be hearing from Ken. We'll, we'll 
be out in the parking lot and we'll still hear him on the bench. <laughs> He's a very vocal coach. Which can be both good and bad. It's great entertainment value. Probably has to take a few days just to rest his voice at times. <laughs> and it looks like... Looks like Ken has called the timeout. Probably drawing a defensive structure against a Panthers team that is really Suddenly, dominating the past five minutes of this game. They have definitely been putting on the pressure a lot more. And what they, they need to keep on that. Keep doing what exactly the Avalanche have been doing. You have to make sure you get on them on the forecheck. Hound those pucks down. They've done that. That's what's given them this opportunity to try and at least cut the lead in half and get the goose egg off the board. They'll have to take more shots, try to make sure they get through, and don't... You want to make sure that things are just nice and simple. Get the puck, take the shot, get it on net, and try for a rebound. It's the best way you're going to beat Dugas at this point. And Schneider's currently at the bench. Surprised that they don't pull him right now, as they have offensive pressure. They have offensive zone in the average end, so Schneider's way out, waiting to get the call from his coach. And the Avalanche win the face up John McPhee smartly pins himself against the boards with the puck. Puck getting dug loose. One of the Avalanche players got crushed up from behind and no call against the Panthers. Schneider leaves it for Mike Butterfield who chips, who chips it off the stick of Tony Young. Avalanche cleared it out once more. Adam Schultz ends up tipping it up. Matt Rublock pressures Bernanke who chips it. Adam Mayer, great play that's picked up by Butterfield. Still the goal is yet to leave as there's 15 seconds left. It's Dugas who tries to cover it up but the bucket's poked loose. Came in a bit of a shoving match with no recapture chin. I'm assuming that he wasn't, uh, that Eric Schneider wasn't called to the bench because the coaching staff wanted to try to get a goal. But in my opinion, that's the, in, in my opinion, Eric Schneider needs to be on the bench with an extra attacker on when you had the, the face off in, the, in your opposing zone and you're down by two goals with less than a minute left. I don't see why you don't take the goalie out. Right now, the are 12.2 seconds left from their 30th win of the season, which based on the results of the St. Catharines game tonight, could put them back into second place. In their Although unlikely, as St. Catharines last I checked was winning 5-2, five to, five to two, I believe it was. Against a lowly for Erie Meteors team. Yeah. Caledonia, though, still tied 1-1, unless the score has changed. Haven't had a chance to Justin check it. Homer. He's got Adam on the other side. Homer may just misses, but Dugas is going to pick up his second shot of the season off a great opportunity late. Avalanche blanked the Pelham Panthers 2-0 and the Panthers were none too happy with the, that last little play but it was their own fault as no one was coming back to defend against them. And Adam Mayer can't believe it. He has an empty net on the backhand and he fans it. He's not too happy about it. Justin Homer made a great play to try to find him but 3-0, to 2-0. Nothing, to, nothing. to Dugas it means nothing. It's Going to be a shut up for him, like you said, his second of the year, and a great defensive effort from the uh, the Ancaster Avalanche. Ancaster posting their third shut up of the season, second for Ryan Dugas. Goals from Nick Blow and Matthew Bridgewater, and getting the win here on home ice. Avalanche will be in Buffalo on Tuesday and then they'll be back here for another Avalanche home game. Come join us for some more Avalanche hockey.